Hi everyone, uh, myself Srinivas Raju, I am CEO to company Unistream Tech Solutions. This short video I am making to bring out, uh, to go inside the deeper technologies, the R&D uh, aspects that we do. Unistream Tech Solutions is an R&D company and uh, throughout this video I am trying to highlight whatever the core electronics engineering students and uh, people with B.Tech, M.Tech background, what they study, uh, how they are relevant to the practical industry uh, when you are building a system which are related to communication radar equipment that we build okay please come with me i'll take you to different uh, areas in which we work and uh, what are all uh, products that we build how those solutions are related to uh, basics of your engineering that you study uh, maybe in your btech or maybe you know uh, in mtech courses uh, those things i'll first start with uh, Simple uh, circuits. So all of you know that uh, electronics when you start maybe in your undergrad, uh, B.Tech first year or second year, you start with uh, electronic devices. So you study transistors, resistors, capacitors, then you understand, you know, how to make a switch, how to make, a, uh, you know, amplifier, you know, how to do that. So the first section that I'm taking you to show here is the simple, uh, uh, what do you call as a level translators you know, switching circuits, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, the, the translation is required, the 1.8 volts uh, logic family to 5 volts logic family and all that and power supply systems. So you study about the AC-DC converter, DC-DC converter and all that. So here, what I'm showing you uh, is that I'm showing certain equipments which are uh, where they're doing the endurance test of the power supply system. So these are DC-DC power supply system. So when I take you to the next part of the video, when I show you that in a, in a electronic hardware, a military electronic hardware, these systems play a vital role in distributing the power supply, taking from AC to DC and carrying out further. So after this uh, power supply, you know, I'm showing you here, some of the circuit related to the level translators. So where the control circuitry, when you are distributing from FPGAs to microcontrollers to I7, I3 computers and all, you require the level translation to be done. So here the testing is going on about some of the level translator circuits. So we at Unistring use these uh, kind of uh, uh, what is called power supply systems and these control circuitries that are built with uh, the legacy. Sometimes we use a legacy uh, MOSFET and BJT. Most of the times we use the ASICs. The ASICs which are already populated inside with the necessary 8-bit level translator, 16-bit level translator like that. Next, let me show you the uh, very critical part in the military design. So in the military design, the most crucial thing is related to uh, radio frequency circuits, what are called RF circuits. All of you studied that whatever works at uh, maybe, uh, you know, IF frequency like 20 megahertz, 70 megahertz and all, things completely change when you talk about, uh, you know, designing at uh, maybe S band, uh, maybe C band, X band, like 6 gigahertz, 10 gigahertz and all. So we have a division in company with uh, more than 30 employees who work on this circuit design and the RF circuit design. So here you can have a look. These are the uh, amplifiers which are capable of going up to 6 gigahertz, covering up to 100 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. So these are different amplifiers. Okay, these are called low noise amplifiers that uh, people who studied this RF and communications, they know the importance of noise figure and communication. So we build these kind of things right from the scratch in the sense we buy material the pcb material like this uh, you know rt duroid rogers kind of high frequency pcb material then we design the pcb layout we make the pcb layout then uh, with the help of industry available in india in hyderabad and bangalore so we print that uh, pcb then we solder here so let me take you to the next uh, the place where we have the soldering uh, facility here uh, you can see uh, like uh, the different soldering stations that we have so uh, these are the setups that you know we solder, even the RF, RF PCBs we solder. Then uh, these are some uh, quality inspection related, some equipment you need for testing the quality of the PCB. Uh, it's, it, you, know, you know in military projects, it, there are a lot of certifications that are needed to check the quality of the system at different levels. So at, uh, at the PCB levels, when they are doing soldering, um, to check the quality of the PCB and the quality of the finishing uh, that they will be using these machines, these places. So once uh, that RF circuitry is actually, uh, once it is done, uh, in terms of uh, circuit, once it is done, the RF PCB is made. So whatever I have shown you, that this is a kind of, uh, because in RF it is very important to have 
what is called uh, EMIMC, electromagnetic interference and all. Otherwise, each RF circuit uh, can actually cause interference to the other RF circuits. So most of the RF circuits, they come in a small size of metal housing. So we have a mechanical division. The mechanical division actually designs this kind of, uh, you know, the uh, required housings. And uh, we send it to the local vendors who use the CNC machines. So they do all the etching and whatever the design as per this and they'll give. So at the soldering stations, the RF will be kept inside this and here using the SMA connectors, it will be soldered, then it will be tested. So then further, let me take you to a full populated product. How does it look like? So here you can see a full populated military product uh, in terms of having, uh, like, let me take you inside into this electronics. So as you can see here, this is a complete military enclosure, so which will be used by uh, army uh, project, uh, p army people. So they will be, the product of, this product is for detecting the, uh, what is that called, unwanted drones in the airspace and all. So inside this, if you see, you have, uh, you know, the complexities related to the power supplies, RF, and you have, this is an FPGA board. So uh, in our uh, products, most of the products, we are using zinc-based FPGA. So in zinc, the xilinx uh, uh, zinc FPGA, you have both uh, like uh, what you call configurable system on chip approach. That is, you have the ARM9 inside and you also have the VHDL code uh, that you write and build the high speed uh, signal processing parts and high speed uh, logics. Uh. So this is an FPGA board. So the complexity inside building a military electronics is all dealt by our integration team. So this is, you can see this is one plate in which more electronics is present. So in an integrated system, this will be taken and this will go into one more layer. So like that in a practical system, there is a three to four layers into which uh, they build the systems. Then we use these uh, instruments to check the performance of the systems. Depending upon the performance of system is up to six gigahertz or 12 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz. The instruments will be used to continuously monitor so even now they have kept this system to monitor some of the characteristic of the this circuit before they go to the integration the further uh, this uh, uh, the I, I will to show some of the steps this is another one system which is integrated system which is getting tested further uh, once uh, one of the important step in the uh, military system qualification is to ensure that the system must uh, qualify the environmental conditions like high humidity and all so a special coating will happen uh, they, they I mean it is one of the step in which as you can see the PCB at a level once it is getting once it is assembled and before it is going to integration so they do uh, this coating conformal coating by which it becomes resistance against the humidity variations and atmospheric variations so once this is done whatever the previous step that we have shown is related to the uh, integration which is after to this so at this premises we do uh, the circuit design we do rf circuit design we uh, do integration of the system with the different levels of testing and uh, bring to a stage where it is ready for uh, going to the field trials now i will take you to the our rooftop where we carry out the antenna level tests by radiating from one antenna receiving from another antenna of course, within the standard norms that the government has approved because government gives a level to which in ISM bands you can emit a power. Within that power, you can do wireless research uh, indoor and uh, within the, your premises. So I'll take you there and show you the what we do in the radiation mode uh, test. Before I take you to the rooftop, I thought I'll show you the antenna arrays that we build. So this is the, these are the printed antennas designed and developed in our company. So these are the antennas capable of uh, wideband uh, reception. Uh, so we these antenna arrays, when they are in the high number, like 40 antennas and all, so they need to be assembled in a radome and in a structure like this. So let me show you. Uh, we also deal with the RF absorbing material. So the RF observers are very crucial because in an antenna system, when you are uh, doing uh, a precise uh, algorithms with uh, and amplitude, with the phase, with the time delay, it is important that you control the multipath at least within your system. You can't control the multipath outside. And the multipath which is coming outside at algorithm level we deal. So these are the set of antenna arrays which are getting ready for assembly. So these are for the lower frequency band and these are the broadband for the higher frequency band. So these antenna arrays we assemble in our uh, antenna uh, system. 
uh, I'll take you now to uh, uh, the top floor to show you that and how do we test radiation more. Yeah, see, antenna testing usually happens in two styles. One method is called open test range. Then second method is in uh, anechoic chambers. So anechoic chambers are good for actually the precise, but for doing initial level works, you know, people can rely on the open test range. So here we have few setups in which we do test cases. So we have a setup here, which is capable of generating a narrow beam signal in wide frequency ranges, right from 100 megahertz to covering up to C band, up to 12 gigahertz, by which we position whatever the system, whatever the antenna array that we want to characterize on the servo systems here, and we, and we calibrate the systems. Then the calibrated data we use in the software for giving the precise uh, detections, direction of arrivals, and location of the uh, system, location of the signals. Uh, I'll also show you one more setup. This is another setup where we are using an X-band horn. And the X-band horn is using as a transmitted antenna. And this is the two-axis servo system. So you have both the azimuth control and you have the elevation control with the two-axis servo system. And you can see here we have a patch array which is getting characterized. So before we go to anechoic chamber and give the final delivery, during the development whatever we need, we actually rely on this open test range, emit a very narrow power, narrow beam signal, uh, and with that we characterize the performance of the system. So uh, further, I'll take you to the software development and what activities we do in the software development, catering the military project uh, purposes, uh, uh, both on the FPGA side and on the processor side.